Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now, all over the world, countries are racing to find a greener alternative to fossil fuel as oil prices rise and the impact of global warming becomes clearer. In Africa, plans are afoot to plant thousands of acres of land with Jatropha, a wild plant that's been growing on the continent for centuries. As well as having medical applications, it's used in the manufacture of candles and soap. But now it's being cultivated on a much bigger scale because it's hoped that its seeds, when crushed, will yield enough oil for it to be used as a biofuel, not only in Africa, but all over the world. So what is it about Jatropha that many are calling it the wonder plant? And does it have the potential to become, as many would have us believe, the biofuel of the future? Well, for more on this, let's speak now to Mary Flower, CEO of the Global Green Development Group, an LA-based company that's working to produce renewable fuels based on African feedstock. Uh, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us. Uh, first of all, um, tell us about this wild plant, Jatropha, and why you are investing so much in it. So uh, the Jatropha plant has uh, contains pure, uh, pure crude oil uh, in the seeds. And so once we studied the plant uh, through our numerous visits to uh, Africa, we decided that we could, um, we're, we're, our company is into green energy uh, and renewable fuels. And we decided that it would be a great way to create an economic um, and social impact agriculture program surrounding Jatropa, training thousands and thousands of farmers to produce this crop as an international or global feedstock to produce uh, tomorrow's renewable fuels. Um, and so the Jatropa tree uh, is one of the top feedstocks uh, for the production of both biodiesel and renewable uh, diesel, uh, and both to uh, for transportation industry for biodiesel, as well as uh, uh, the airline and commercial airlines and Department of Defense for uh, renewable diesel. So, uh, seeing this wonder plant uh, and and seeing that it's growing uh, very well in Africa, we decided to uh, invent a social impact program where the farmers could grow this feedstock with guaranteed offtake from our company uh, to uh, produce for our refineries that are producing in America and eventually will be also producing in Africa. So the Jatropa um, um, uh, program uh, is one that um, supports the farmers. We give them, uh, we have them join a cooperative where they have um, all the funding they need uh, to produce. And the farmers actually in the cooperative will get full subsistence, um, fertilizer, um, irrigation if needed, seeds, uh, everything there that's needed to produce the plants, we put agronomists on the ground to uh, work uh, full time with the farmers to uh, maximize crop productivity. And this is a structured program that allows the farmers to make um, far more money than they're currently making today because we um, off take every seed that they produce and so all they have to do is harvest and bring it to the uh, local uh, biodiesel refinery that we're setting up in multiple countries. The program is designed to scale uh, the continent and so uh, many countries will be participating in this program and already um, we're working with Cultivore uh, who has um, inter has um, put forward um, their LOI um, as well as Ethiopia or Congo. There are multiple countries and governments that have an interest with this program uh, in each region that we in, um, um, install the program and work with the farmers. We're able okay, to I, I'm to just going to come in there for a minute. I don't mean to interrupt you, uh, but thank you for setting all that out for us. But if you look at the statistics uh, from very various governments, not just in, in Africa, but in places like India 
etc. Quite a number of projects aimed at exploiting Jetropha have failed. I mean, yields from Jetropha plantations have failed to live up to expectations and have been abandoned in places like Ethiopia, Madagascar, Gabon, the DRC, etc. I mean, why did those projects fail and what are you doing differently this time? Well, I think and, and when Jatropa was first introduced to the world, I think it was somewhere around 2010, 2011, it was introduced by India, as a matter of fact, as a wonder plant that can grow in any environment. Uh, this is true, but with any uh, uh, plant, uh, when you're um, uh creating the plant, growing the plant, it, any, you, if you have water, the plants will produce more. So a lot of times these plants were planted in marginal lands. There were no studies on Jatropa at that time. Um, now we have uh, done the research, we have studies that show Jatropa is a viable uh, resource to produce biodiesel uh, and renewable jet fuel. And the United States, we've been uh, flying our fighter jets for many, many years on Jatropa-based uh, 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 fuels, uh, which is blended with fossil fuel. Uh, now the new mandates globally require uh, that all aircraft uh, re uh, uh, reduce their carbon emissions through a program called Corsia. And in that program, they're requiring a 50-50 blend of Jatropa with, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, of, um, of uh, renewable feedstock with fossil fuel. And uh, so while there was uh, failures before, we have a very structured and detailed um, program that sort of is a hand-holding scenario for uh, the farmers. They're in a very structured environment. They have all of the funding they need. That's another reason that many of these programs collapse because the farmers had uh, no access to capital and uh, they did not have the proper training. Right. Uh, but, but, but I mean, let, let me ask you this because I, I know you're planning to do, you know, things on a fairly large scale. You talked about a number of countries in Africa where you want the farmers to grow the produce and so on. And then it'll be a, uh, processed and refined in America. But if so many farmers across Africa start to focus on Jatropha rather than edible crops, I mean, won't that threaten food production, something that poor countries in Africa can ill afford? And we've got less than a minute, so keep it brief if you yes, don't mind. Yes, okay, so uh, our Jatropha to Biofuel program does focus on Jatropha, but it also uh, can accept palm oil, and in Africa there's lots of palm oil abandoned plantations. Uh, so it takes multiple feedstocks, and when we talk about food, uh, we intercrop with food crops. We teach the farmers to intercrop with food crop. So in actuality, our program brings two value chains, one which is a renewable energy crop, and at the same time, we're growing food crops. And uh, one of the things that we picked up on uh, is that a lot of the food is that is grown currently in Africa goes to waste because of lack of less electricity and so forth. And so we're also putting in uh, food processing facilities uh, so when we harvest the food crops with the farmers, we're able to create a new grocery value chain through packaging and um, right. doing storage of the, of the food. So we're actually doing two value chains which solves that Okay, problem. well, I, I, I wish we would have more time, uh, you know, come back and talk to us again. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Mary Flower is CEO of the Global Green Development Group, and she was talking to me from Los Angeles.